One thing we've all seen before are crows eating our precious hard work. And the rule of thumb for crows are the more crops you have, the more crows you're gonna get. So under normal circumstances, the way to get the most possible crows in your field at one time would be to do as many crops as you can. Fill your entire field with crops and let that crop sit at a matured stage for as long as possible. Do your entire field with parsnips. After only 4 days, it's matured. Let that sit for another 24 days, see how many crows you have. And that's what we're gonna start with. And we're gonna start with that because by the end of this video, I'm gonna have a crow eat every single one of my crops on a single day. But the first thing we need to do is skip it around to the beginning of spring so we've got another year to wait because I want to plant my parsnips on the very first day of spring and act like it's a regular month. Well, here we are one year later. I forgot to clear all my ancient fruit so we've got a few crows eating those right now. Eh, whatever. These can go away and we're gonna trade these in for the valuable parsnips. But that should give you some indication of exactly how many crows will show up over a matter of time. Anyways, back to the task at hand, we need to carefully hoe everything on my farm. Uh, do note that this might hoe some of the spaces that aren't normally hoeable, but we're just going to go ahead and plant those anyway because this is just so much easier than what I normally do. Parsnips are easy, we'll need a few stacks of those, I think there's going to be about 3500 spaces to plant right now. And actually, now that I think about this, it doesn't have to be parsnips because crows can eat your seeds at any stage of their development, they don't need to be matured. But since I've already got parsnips, we're just going to do parsnips for now. Even tomorrow, these could be consumed by the crows. But I forgot about that little detail, but that's not a big deal. As long as we have a month-long crop, we'll just see how many crows eat these over the course of a month. There are, of course, some crops that grow over several months, so we'll give those a try too. The one with the longest range being the ancient fruit, which can grow from spring all the way through to fall. So say you were to plant those in the spring and just let them grow over the course of three months, what would happen? Okay, that's done. We have about 300 left over, so we planted about 3,700 seeds, which is several hundred more than normal, but with my hoe anywhere mod, I literally hoe anywhere. Just a matter of watering the crops. In four days, these will be done, but at that point, I'm just going to skip time till the end of the month, and we're going to see what the crows have eaten. Actually, kind of a fun fact for parsnips, you don't really even need to water them because they only take four days to grow. You can basically skip time and it's going to rain that many days throughout the month as long as you start them early in the month. Before we go check on these crows, I'm going to turn my movement speed up just a bit because they tend to fly away as you get close, so I want to get close to as many of them as possible before they fly away. Not actually as bad as I thought. Over the course of a month, there's maybe five crows per screen, six crows in the area of my screen fully zoomed in, so definitely not nearly as many as I thought. But that's okay, that's probably good news. That means for anyone playing, you're not going to lose a lot of your crops to birds. In fact, I've done that experiment before, whether scarecrows are really worth it or not, given the space they themselves take up. But as you can see, you still have a lot of crops, a lot of profit. Crows didn't eat that many, really. So let's try this again next year, but we're going to go spring to fall with ancient fruit. And here we go again, the painful process of hoeing, and then we're going to plant. I was kind of tempted to use speed grow just to make these grow a little bit faster, but that's not really going to make a difference anyway. I'm probably only going to water these for 10 days maybe, uh, hopefully the rain will take care of the rest over the course of 3 months. I'm not entirely sure how much it rains every month. I think it varies a bit, depends on luck, whatever. But I think 10 days of watering, we'll see if these are going to grow. It's been 10 straight days of watering, so I'm going to go ahead and let Mother Nature take the wheel from here. We're going to go ahead and go to the end of fall to see how many crows show up. I want to mention too that I don't have max daily luck on, this is natural luck. Luck may or may not have an effect on how many crows show up to eat your crops, so we're going to let the game naturally do what it does. Turns out the 28th of fall is a rainy day. Gotta remember that for future reference. And I just realized that maybe rain doesn't happen when I'm skipping through time, so I guess we're going to find out. Nope, they're all grown. Still not as many crows as you might have thought for three months of skipping through time. Again, this is about as many crows as you're ever going to find naturally in the game without using a few mods or cheats, so let's take a look. Yeah, there's still quite a few crows, but not a huge amount. Not sure what happened here, that's probably just a spot I missed planting. Whoops, not a big deal anyway. Results wouldn't have varied that much, there might have been a few more crows in there. Really not that many more than there were for the parsnips though, I'm pretty surprised with this. We did get a little tuft of grass to grow and we did get a meteorite. We'll go ahead and remove that and we're going to start this again fresh, with hopefully a few more crows involved. And since it's a rainy day and my stuff just grows endlessly anyway through any season, we're just going to replant today. I was tempted to do melons, but melons, they turn into mega crops, giant crops that is, and crows can't eat giant things, so we're just going to go ahead and do rare seeds. I'm honestly not really sure how much time it's going to take for these crows to eat everything, so I think we're going to start with 5, maybe even 10 years. I just want to double check to make sure I actually got everything planted, including the pond. Not sure if crows can eat there or not. We'll find out. Obviously you can't normally plant there. Well, we're going to start this on year 202. 
It's the 28th of fall, year 202. So we're going to go to year 207 and see how that works. And if that doesn't work, we're going to try a 10 year gap. So that means for me, it's pretty much just a waiting game. I just want to manually save my progress overnight, and then we're going to start skipping. The most we can skip even all at once is three years. We're going to year 205. Maybe we'll just do that twice. We'll do six years to start. Wait, my math didn't add up there. We'll do five years to start. Five years, confirmed. That honestly took a really long time. And good news, I overshot it by a year because I wasn't really paying attention. Now at this point, I'm going to try and just peek out the door without disturbing any crows because if this didn't work and the entire field is not full of crows, I don't really want to start the whole process again to go through an entire 10 years. I'd rather just add another 5 years onto what I'm already doing, so let's see if this is going to work. Right, we've got a lot of crows. That one flew away, that one flew away, uh oh. Okay, well, it's probably going to be another 5 years or so, so let's give it another 5. Which is really unfortunate because even skipping through time like this takes a lot of my time. I think at this point we would need to take another peek at the field to see exactly what's going on because something doesn't quite seem to be adding up to me. We're in year 210, it is the first of spring today. I need to see if we're gaining more crows or kind of holding an even amount. We seem to be holding something of an even amount, but I can't help but notice there's still a lot of empty spaces around. So let's take a quick look at this. Getting quite a few crows, but not nearly as many as I would have thought. I think we had more earlier even in a tighter area when we started the video and I don't know why that is. So I might need to rethink my strategy. Maybe the crows don't really like the sweet gem berries. Maybe crows act differently around different crops? I'm not sure, we definitely had a lot more crows earlier in the video. One thing I want to do right now is we're actually going to harvest all of this. We might be limited on the number of crows we can get, and that's why you see so many crows in a small area, but if you do the entire field, it just can't do it. But we're going to harvest all of this to see how many, uh, roughly, the crows have eaten so far over the course of about seven and a half years. Seven and a half years. They've eaten quite a bit, but I expected by now for most of these to be gone. I think that was most of them, and I believe we had about 3,700 in the field to begin with, give or take. It's a bit of an approximation, but I need to know this so I can do this properly. The number we're left with is 2,691. A few of those would have been lightning strikes, I lost a few meteors, but that roughly means we lost about a thousand berries over the course of about seven and a half years. I expected better results. I definitely am wondering if there is a max number of crows we can have. Because earlier I saw a ton of crows in an area something like this big. So let's just leave it at that. Let's let these grow for just one year and come back and see exactly how many crows we have in this one area. I suspect it's going to be the same amount of crows, but it's just going to seem a lot more intense because they're concentrated in that little area. One short year later, let's see the results now. See, more crows in a more tightly packed spot. I really think there's got to be a limit to how many crows you can have. Even then, the ratio still isn't necessarily crazy. They ate quite a few of the parsnips, but as you can see, we still have the majority of our parsnips. After looking into it just a little, I've kind of determined that crows have a 30% chance of spawning on a random crop on any given night. Something still seems a little odd there because we're definitely not getting 1 in 3 crows every night. That means within 3 nights we should have a ton of crows and it just doesn't seem to work that way. I don't know if they overlap, maybe they can pick spots that aren't on the farm. No idea, but luckily I do have a solution and it starts with planting a bunch of potatoes. Why potatoes? Because they take I believe 8 days to grow and they're not parsnips. We've seen parsnips and I need a crop that's going to go pretty quickly. I stand corrected, 6 days, even better, so we get a new crop to look at that's only going to take 6 days of rain. Again, they don't need to be matured, I just want them to be because I don't know why. And on the very first night we have the crop fairy showing up to probably not make every crop in existence grow, but probably 3 or 9 of them. And I can't skip this, so we're just going to watch the fairy fly around for a minute. Well, today's the big day. If I'm understanding this correctly, I should be able to walk out the door right now and we're going to find a whole bunch of crows. Should we give it a try? I'm ready. Yep, there we go. Lots of crows to be found. It's kind of interesting the way they fly around. Wow, we even had a few survivors still. I think this pretty much counts as the entire field done though. Wow, I summoned in literally thousands of crows and we still have some potato survivors. I have no idea what it's going to take to get them to eat every last one. Maybe 30,000 crows spawned in? Again, that goes to show you how long it actually would have taken for me to do this a natural way, if it was even possible. My very first crop of crows. 
So proud of these guys. Still got one more thing I want to try. I need to put some seeds down. Since this idea wasn't going my way, I just had a mod made that can spawn crows. I press the V button, we get a thousand crows. So I'm gonna lay down 4,000 seeds and we're gonna see if we can bring these guys in in real time to see them show up and exactly how they work, hopefully. Not gonna worry about the spots like that. This is just for fun at this point. I feel like I've already accomplished my goal. A little more over here. Okay, so if we press V now, what happens? Yep, they're coming in. So every time I press V, it should be a thousand crows, but Still not really seeing a lot in real time. All right, well, we'll try it again tomorrow. We'll water these so they turn into little sprouts. I'm going to press V like a billion times, and hopefully then everything ever is eaten. Final attempt at as many crows as possible. Like I said, every time I press V should give me 1,000 crows. So I'm just going to continually press it, what I assume to be 50 times, 50,000 crows at least, between 50 and 100,000 crows. If that doesn't eat the 3,700 or so crops out there, well... I guess there's just no doing it. All right, over 100,000 times. Nothing. Why do we have nothing now? Maybe they do have to be matured. Okay, a couple more days then. Let's try that again today. Final attempt. Definitely pressed over 100,000 crows into existence. And oh, we still have a few survivors. There was at least one, two. Listen to the sound it makes. That's hilarious. Cool. Well... I've accomplished my hopes and dreams of filling my entire field with crows, give or take five, six spaces that, I don't know, I guess luck's a factor. Whatever, good enough. Hope you liked it. Thanks for watching. Enjoy my crows.